fellow Movie Crusaders, and welcome to another episode of Sean's Movie Crusades as I am reviewing the Elton John biopic Rocket Man. Uh, coming off the heels of Bohemian Rhapsody, where Remy Malik won uh, Best Actor uh, for the Oscars for his portrayal of Freddie Mercury, this one comes less than six months after that. Uh, so let's see if this movie is good or if it just feels a little too close to home with Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, Elton John, uh, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily a fan, but I do like his music. It's not something that I go out of my way to uh, go and listen to. Um, but he has he has a lot of great songs and, and memorable classics. So um, he's, he's someone that I'm <clears throat> well aware of. And uh, I enjoy his music, but it's not someone that I'm like, oh, I love Elton John. So I was real intrigued by this. And I wasn't intrigued because of, of it being Elton John. I was intrigued because Taron Egerton from Kingsman was going to perform as Elton John. And the first trailer um, really intrigued me because it looked like it was going kind of more of a fantasy kind of approach, like a fantasy musical, um, than it just being kind of a true beat-for-beat um, beat musical uh, biopic like, like Bohemian Rhapsody, even though it completely did not follow the, the true story of Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm a huge Taron Egerton fan. I love him as an actor. Kingsman, he was fantastic. Eddie the Eagle, who was also directed by the same um, director in this, which is Derek Fletcher, who was also the guy who came in and directed Bohemian Rhapsody when Brian Singer dropped out. So he has his ways with musical biopics, and he's got uh, experience with working with Taron Egerton. Um, but yeah, I was real intrigued and excited to see what Taron was going to do with his performance because he they do make him look like Elton John in this film. There are certain times in the movie where I was like, man, that actually looks like Elton and not Taron. And then there were other times where I was like, that's clearly Taron Egerton. Um, but yeah, uh, general plot is basically the, a, a fantasized look at the life of Elton John. Goes through his childhood, goes through his how he um, gets into music and how he, uh, kind of like a normal musical, musical biopic, you know, someone gives him a chance and he takes it and he explodes and then he goes through drug and booze and love, you know, angles and stuff like that. It's all about his life, but done in a, in a fantasized way, almost to the terms of, of being a musical where, um, people will be in the middle of a conversation and then just break out into an Elton John song. And it's not always Taron Egerton singing it. It'll be different co-stars and supporting cast singing the song. Um, so yeah, it's very musical heavy where there are dance numbers where people will just start breaking out in a dance. Um, so you gotta kind of be prepared for that, uh, you know, because it's, it, while it, it, it is, you know, a real life story, there are fantasy sides going into it as certain aspects of Elton John's life leads him to start singing a song based off of what's going on. So you'll, you'll have, you'll have a greatest hits of Elton John, Elton's, uh, being played that are really renditioning to situations that are happening to him currently in his life, and those songs fit those things uh, beautifully. But that's the general plot of Rocket Man, is that it's basically the story in the life of Elton John. Um, what works with Rocket Man? Uh, pretty much almost everything. Taron Egerton is phenomenal in this role. He does an incredible job of performing and portraying Elton John. He sings all, all the songs on his own. It's not Remy Malik lip-syncing Freddie Mercury. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just, I mean, it's Freddie Mercury. How can you dub over him? How can you recreate his voice? So I get why they made Remy or Rami Malik um, um, do that. But Egerton has a phenomenal voice, and he sings all the songs in this, so there's no Elton John dub over. This is all 100% Taron singing it, and he does an incredible job and right now is my front runner for best actor of the year. Um, if he's not nominated for this to come Oscar season, I really don't know what more Taron Egerton can do because he do, he does a breakthrough kind of role. Like everyone knows him as Kingsman and, and other things, um, but this is his his coming out party. I feel to people to take him seriously as an actor and not just an action parkour kind of kind of um, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, superstar. Um, the rest of the cast is fantastic as well. You got Jamie Bell. Jamie Bell does a fantastic job playing, uh, Bernie Toppin, who's the guy who writes the lyrics for Elton and his, his, uh, lifetime best friend to the point where Elton calls him his brother. They're best friends for probably over 40-some years. Um, Jamie Bell 
does a great job playing that character, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was looking at potential supporting actor uh, recognition come award season, as well as Bryce, <coughs> excuse me, Bryce Dallas Howard, who plays Elton John's mother, Sheila. She plays such a, um, ho- well, she's just, like horrible. Like I hated her in this movie, and it's not because that Bryce Dallas Howard played a horrible job by any means. She does a fantastic job in this film, but the mother character is put in such a horrible light that I hated Bryce Dallas Howard, Bryce Dallas Howard in this film. And she does a fantastic job. She could be looking at a Best Actress supporting nomination coming out of this. Um, Richard Madden from Game of Thrones, who people know as Rob Stark, he does a great job, almost villainous to a point, uh, portrayal of John Reed. Um, you also have uh, Tom, or not Tom, uh, Matthew... El- Elsley and Kit Connor, who both play younger versions of Elton John, they do fantastic in their small little roles of playing basically the the younger and kind of teenagers t- or young adolescent teenager version of Elton John. the The song numbers are incredible. The choreography, the cinematography, it's bright, it's colorful. All the all the um, outfits that Taron wears um, look like something that Elton John would wear. And even at the end of the film, they show. Like almost like side by sides of a shot of Taryn wearing this outfit, and then the actual outfit that Elton wore. It is it is a heartbreaking, sad story, but it also is an uplifting story as well. And like I said, Taryn Egerton knocks it out of the park, does a flipping amazing job. And like I said, if he doesn't get a Best Actor nomination, I really don't know what more that he can do as a performer to get recognized. Um, this movie is everything that I wanted Bohemian Rhapsody to be. Uh, I I like Bohemian Rhapsody. It's just that I didn't like how they changed. They 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 told false stories, um, such as the group breaking up, which they never really did, or how they they changed Freddie Mercury's AIDS diagnosis um, three years earlier, just so that way it looked more dramatic when they did Live Aid. That stuff really irked me. There's nothing in this film that they do that feels like they're tacking it on for just dramatic effect. It feels like this is stuff that's going on through Elton John's life. They also don't do any timeline. So they never say what year it is or anything like that. You're just watching everything as it unfolds. And your basis of timeline is basically Elton John's receding hairline and the wrinkles on Taron Egerton's face. That's basically how you can tell how much time has passed. Uh, the only thing that I really didn't think worked with the movie is there's one scene... Uh, well, not scene, but there's one sequence in the film that seems like a very important and very pivotal thing that happened in Elton John's life that literally, (coughs) it's literally glossed over in five minutes to the point where if you weren't going to give that much time to this certain aspect of his life, then you either should have taken it out or given it the time that it deserved because it was in and out super quick that it just felt like it was thrown in there just to be thrown in there instead of actually adding substance to the story outside of something that got mentioned earlier in the film and that's why he did this um like i said it it's not a bad scene by any means but it was just it was there and it was gone and it was just like what why did you show us that if you weren't going to really delve deep into it that's really the only negative was like this five minute sequence other than that i loved this movie um overall it's one of my favorite films of the year like i said i think uh Oscar nomination for Taron Egerton, potential supporting nom for Jamie Bell, potential uh, supporting actress nom for Bryce Dallas Howard. Richard Madden might even creep up there for for, uh, nomination. I loved everyone's performances. Taron Egerton's voice does a fantastic job. It is musically beautiful. It is visually beautiful. It's a sad film, but it's an uplifting, happy film at the same time. And I can give nothing but high, high, high marks for this film overall. And I strongly urge everyone to go out of their way to try and see this film. I get it's summer movie season and an Elton John biopic is probably not on everyone's um, to, to watch list. But go out of your way to watch Rocket Man. You will not be disappointed. If you're a fan of Bohemian Rhapsody, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't love this film unless you're just not a fan of Elton John. But if you're not a fan of Elton John, this movie might make you a fan of Elton John. Because the songs are incredible, they're catchy, and they're interwoven into this film beautifully with the story that you are seeing. And like I said, uh, uh, Jamie Bell sings very well in this, Di- Bryce Dallas Howard sings very well, Richard Madden sings very well in this film. So it's not just Taron Egerton. The whole spring cast has song numbers in this, and they all do a great job. Um, so yeah, 
high, high marks. Go out and see this movie and uh, give the notice or give the recognition that this movie deserves because it is one of the best films of the year. So because of that, going to the top movies of 2019 so far, Rocket Man comes in at the number two spot, t overtaking the, uh, just took the number two spot, Booksmart. So going to the top ten list, Avengers Endgame still going to be number one. I, 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 let's put it this way. I just don't know if there's anything that's going to take the number one spot from Avengers Endgame. Rocket Man comes in at number two, followed by Booksmart. Number four goes to us. Number five is John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. Number six is Longshot. Seven is Brightburn. Eight is Aladdin. Nine is Shazam. Ten is Godzilla, King of the Monsters, with Pokemon Detective Pikachu dropping out of the top ten. Uh, so yeah, um, that's basically the review. If you guys feel like this review is worth sharing, go and hit that like button, uh, and go and hit that share button as well. But most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so we guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up on Sean's Movie Crusades. And also don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Uh, next, Like I said, next week, um, we've got X-Men Dark Phoenix. We'll see how that ends, whether it'll be a train wreck or whether they'll limp across the finish line. That'll be very uh, interesting to see how that goes. And then Secret Life of Pets 2 comes out. I wasn't a real big fan of the first one, so I probably won't go out of my way to see this one unless you guys really want a review for it. Then I'll go see it. But right now, it looks like I'm probably just going to go see X-Men Dark Phoenix. Uh, but yeah, um, please, please leave your comments, whether it be about this film or any of the films you see or any recommendations of movies you want me to review. Go ahead and leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on all those social media outlets you see below to uh, give me recommendations. I like recommendations. I want to go watch things that you guys want me to review so you guys can uh, can watch more videos. And I hope you guys are, are liking this kind of faster, um, kind of quicker review. I'm personally not a fan of it because I feel like I have to speed, <laughs> speed talk through all this. Um, but yeah, if this is what you guys want, then this is what I'll do. But uh, yeah, until next week, until next time, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, movie crusaders.